We have a Fetch TV box that says there's a critical hardware fault. In this video I'll show you how I fixed it for free. So I'd exhausted all the troubleshooting guides. My model number according to the support at Fetch TV will only accept a specially formatted hard drive. I believe that later versions allow the use of blank hard drives so you'd skip the cloning steps. If you don't have a hard disk to recycle expect to pay about 45 Australian dollars for a one terabyte hard disk on Amazon. I didn't actually record the disassembly so some of the clips you'll see here are just the clips in reverse. Push the bottom cover towards the back of the machine and then just lift it out. Each of the three side panels have six lugs on them. You really need to tug at these quite hard to get them to pull out. On the base there are five Torx screws that you need to remove, one of them will be hidden behind a sticker. There are five Phillips screws you need to undo to remove the hard disk cover. The hard disk just slides out. There are four machine screws that hold the base of the hard drive cover on. So this hard drive here is the one that was inside the Fetch TV and that's a, a one terabyte Western Digital one. I have a replacement hard drive and this one was one from inside a TiVo box that I had from years ago. For my model of Fetch TV, that's the M616T which is the 1080p version, I needed a specially formatted hard disk so I was lucky that my hard disk had not completely failed. I already had a hard drive cloner to back up or check hard drives so if you don't have one of these expect to pay about 45 Australian dollars on Amazon for one. Hard disk cloners are pretty easy to use. Mine has a top slot that's a source disk so I'll put the Fetch TV working drive in there and the bottom one was the destination. That was just a blank one terabyte hard drive. Then press the clone button for three seconds. That starts off the series of incremental lights and once the lights go static then that's the clone complete and then you can just turn it off and remove the hard drives. To reassemble, use the four machine screws to attach the hard disk tray. And I'll just repeat that for the other three. Insert the hard drive connector with these two portions here, with its tray attached, lining up with the connector here. Then reattach the hard drive cover with five Phillips screws and just this final Phillips screw. So you have the three light tubes for the LEDs, the LEDs there so it goes around in this position and then flip it over to show the base. Secure the base with the five Torx screws. Interestingly they had a warranty void if removed sticker which is not allowed and doesn't void your warranty in many countries including here in Australia. So around the box we have three covers, push the side covers into place. One with a USB flap on the side. Okay so that's one side on, one with no holes on the side. One the pegs. So interestingly enough this one felt different to the other sides. So we see that on the front of the box we have the infrared receiver and if I shine a light through the bottom you can see that this is a translucent material to allow the infrared remote signal to pass through and next the base so it has some locating pegs there and some bits that slide in to stop it from falling out so you put that on with it extending out beyond the back and then you push forward and that's it back together. So all that's left now is to reattach the cables, turn on the power and do some testing. Oh gee, so much dust. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's promising. Cool. So now we'll go into the settings, choose diagnostics. And that's run all the tests. They're all completed successfully, which is really good. Sorted. And with all the recycling, didn't cost me a penny. Cheerio.